Hello and welcome to another episode of my Datsun 280Z project car build. I'm Dave, this is Grindhouse Performance Engineering, and in today's episode, I wanted to try designing and building a 3D printed center console for the car from scratch. This is a super big project that's way outside my comfort zone, but I'm feeling really good after finishing the gauge cluster and I wanna give it a try. I've got a lot of ideas, but there's a lot of things that we have to figure out today, so let's get into it. This will be a really short video if this camera falls. I'm kind of hoping, I'm fingers crossed. I think the most important place to start with this whole design is going to be figuring out a way to actually replicate this space in CAD so that we can start to freely modify and freely work in some kind of design envelope. But the problem is being able to reliably measure anything on this transmission tunnel is kind of a nightmare. There's not a whole lot in the transmission tunnel that's easy to measure. Everything's kind of ambiguous as far as where it lays and how to measure things reliably relative to one location to another. Figuring out like angles of things when it's not really continuous, figuring out radiuses of things when it's not really continuous, even kind of measuring lengths of things or widths of things is kind of a pain in the neck because there's so many different curves and shapes going on with this panel that it's kind of a nightmare. I think that there's a lot of opportunity here to do something really cool. Um, basically what I'm envisioning is I wanna have some kind of steel frame that's gonna get welded to this. We're gonna cut out most of the transmission tunnel, the top of the tunnel, and then we'll do a steel frame with aluminum covers so that we can get access underneath into like all the wiring and the sensors. I wanna be able to take this um, top plate off the transmission if I need to. Um, I wanna be able to get to the oxygen sensors. I wanna be able to get to like the fuel lines that are gonna be running underneath here. And then I wanna be able to have a channel for any kind of wiring that's gonna be running to the back of the car to be able to run down through here. I think our best approach is gonna be starting with the shifter and then kind of working our way backward and working our way forward to come up with all the spacing of everything around it. Um, since this isn't gonna move and we can really reliably measure the diameter of this, we can then start to make guesses on the angle here and exactly how far left or right from center the transmission is within the tunnel. And that can really accurately start giving us dimensions to work with. So by printing this part, we're able to guess this taper on this edge here. And then we're also able to locate the shifter hole versus the center line of the transmission tunnel, which I think we've done a really good job here. Now, what we are able to do is we're able to measure from this front edge here to get our distances to like these spot welds, for example. And then we can go backwards off of this edge here to measure like where the reliefs for the e-brake need to be any other spot welds, and then all the way back to the back of the transmission. We can start to map everything out, measure everything to make sure that it's square to the tool, and then kind of take it from there. There's kind of a lot going on with the next tool, so let me walk you through it. Working out from the shifter, the first thing I wanted to add is clearance for removing the engine and transmission together and also removing the transmission from the engine. Adding this serviceability should make pulling the transmission a lot easier in the future. I added a center line for making measurements on the tunnel, then added windows up at the top so I can make sure the frame will line up with the OEM spot welds. I added this purple section to show where the parking brake handle sits on the tunnel. I'll need to add a relief in the center console here later on. I added the basic shape of the steel frame that will get welded to the body. This will get modified during the design, but it's going to give me a starting point in the car. The last piece of the tool locates the console itself. The tunnel's pretty rough, so I wanted to give the console some room. This should also give me a good idea that I've got the taper and other dimensions from the car as good as I can. Altogether, this tool gets pretty complicated, but it gives us a ton of information for converting the physical body of the Datsun into a usable design envelope for the console. Here's where we can start having fun with this. By using the design envelope, we can start drawing the steel frame that's gonna get laser cut from send cut send and welded to the transmission tunnel. This leaves a lot of room for accessing and servicing the transmission as well as removing that top cover for the shifter assembly. We can also add a stiffening brace that'll keep everything nice and strong.
The next thing I wanted to bring into Fusion is the shifter itself. This lets me start figuring out the shape of the center console and how much room I need to give it to be able to go through the gears. I think for modeling the console itself, I want to start with as simple shapes as possible and then start cutting away the things that I know I'm not going to need, but that makes sure that the solid body underneath is going to be robust when I go to turn it into a shell and make it hollow on the inside. I've modeled this a handful of times now, but I think I'm working towards what I'm going to end up using in the end. Instead of tapering the whole console, I'm using offset planes and then an extrusion cut to knock it down and flatten out the front and the back of the console. This gives it a little bit more shape and also lets it actually fit inside my 3D printer when I go to print these pieces. Using the design envelope as a guide, I can cut down the sides now and give us a good idea of what the console is going to look like. The next area that I'm focusing on is for the parking brake specifically. I want to make sure that I don't only have room for the handle itself, but also for my hand to go around it to pull the parking brake up when I'm parking the car. I'm just starting with a simple sketch based on some measurements I took straight off the car. Since the shifter kicks back, it moves a lot when you go between all the gears, so it was important to me to have something that looked good but still didn't hit anything when I actually went to put it into gear. Using a protractor, I put the shifter into all the different gears and measured how far the shifter was actually moving, then recreated that in CAD to make sure that it wasn't going to hit anything. There's still a chance, I tried to get it as good as I could, this was a really tricky part of the project to do. Making the console hollow, there was a lot of things that I wanted to hide in there, but it just really wasn't quite big enough to be able to do so. I looked at putting the amp down there, I looked at putting, you know, the battery, anything that I could possibly fit, but realistically, there's not a ton of room underneath this thing, and I would rather package those things somewhere else where it's really not going to be a problem to get to. All the wiring for the battery and then all the wiring on the back half of the car, like for the fuel cell and the tail lights, all those things are still going to run through this part of the transmission tunnel and that'll be just fine. I'm planning on adding the battery behind the passenger seat and so I'm adding this pass through here in case it winds up there. If it goes all the way in the trunk then I won't be using it, but it's out of the way anyway so it's not hurting anything to have. I doubt I'll be able to hear any kind of speakers over the exhaust system of the car, but I wanted to add them to the console anyway because I wanted to make this look really nice and really complete. So the speakers are pretty heavy, so I'm going to add a backing plate that I'm going to get laser cut to try to relieve some of the stress that's going to be on the 3D printed shell. I wanted to break up all the flat panels a little bit, so I decided to add these pocketed holes and then add some laser-cutted pieces wherever the seats aren't going to be getting in the way, wherever it's going to be visible. I think this is going to be a pretty dramatic change overall versus kind of what I was originally going for, and I'm really excited with how this is turning out. At no point did I accidentally break Fusion trying to make these patterns work. picked up a super small and lightweight Kenwood amplifier and head unit combination that's controlled over Bluetooth. For how small the amp is, it still packs 400 watts and I'm really curious how it's going to sound in the car. The head unit included a small plastic case for it to get mounted to and my plan is I'm going to sink that into the 3D print and then glass over it so that it's smooth.
At this point, the console is really far along and it looks awesome, but it doesn't really help us at all because it's not actually connected to the frame at all. The next thing I started working on was how to actually connect the steel frame to the console. I'm doing this mostly by doing tab and slot assemblies that I'll get laser cut and hopefully will assemble in just the right place when it comes time. One of my favorite details of this project was actually adding the shift pattern into the middle mount. I think I'm going to have this laser cut in titanium and burn it and then put the cover over it so that it covers everything but the shift pattern. I wanted this section of the center console to be really strong because there's a good chance that I'm going to be pushing against it when I go to get in and out of the car. With the console hidden, you can start to see all the pieces that are getting laser cut and powder coated for this project. This is starting to get really overwhelming and I'm super excited to see it come together. I designed a bunch of features on the side of the console that are gonna let me run fur tree clips and run wiring for the head unit and the front speakers all the way back to the back of the console. The amplifier is gonna be behind the front seats so being able to get all the wiring there and be able to remove the console with all the wiring together was important to me. The front mounts are printed directly into the console. I didn't want to add some really tall scaffolding like I did with the mid and the back mounts. This area was just too tall to work that in, especially with the speakers in the way. I'm hoping this is going to work out, but it's a little bit of a risk with the weight of the speakers, but we'll just have to see how it works out. I don't know about you, but my brain is freaking fried with this one. This took everything that I had. I had to learn a lot to pull this together and I don't really even know if it's gonna work out yet. That's gonna be like 10 or 12 days of 3D printing parts later. Um, and I've got a bunch of stuff to order to get laser cut as well. Um, I'm really hoping this is gonna work out. I tried to explain it the best that I could um, as I was coming up with everything. Um, but let me know what you guys think if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. If you made it this far in the video, be sure to hit that like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.